Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Borg. If you enjoy the content, please do subscribe above or down below to keep the channel growing to 215 by March 15th. This is going to be a video previewing our Reading Royals now in Wooster against the Wooster Railers after having a great shootout win led by Logan Flodell, Anthony Gagnon, and of course the continued great play of Trevor Goose, Patrick Bykoff, and etc. etc. from our Red Hot Royals as they look to make it six straight this evening against the Wooster Railers. The comparative numbers for both teams is 163 goals scored uh, for the Railers, 170 goals scored for our Reading Royals. Goals against is also 163 uh, for the Wooster Railers, as I'll get to that <clears throat> stat in a minute for our Royals. Uh, shootouts, both teams have been in one, obviously, well, we know where that was with our Royals. Shorthanded goals, it's 5-3 to three in favor of Wooster. And um, power play percentage is 1% in favor of Wooster at 21 to the Royals 22%. I do really like how Anthony Gagnon has looked on the power play. And I asked him a question about that in the post game. If you want to check out um, last game's post game interviews, he's talked about that and how comfortable he is setting up on the one timer side on the power play. We're better on the penalty kill by 3%, though, at 79 to 76%. I would have to think Colton Ellis will be in net again because Ken Appleby is not. He's not with the club anymore. Um, so I would have to think Colton Ellis would be in because Jimmy Parada has only been adequate where uh, Appleby's back up with Bridgeport and has been playing really good for the Bridgeport Islanders. So I would have to think they were going to go with their top netminder and Colton Ellis, who was absolutely amazing too um, last game on Wednesday. And that's why I went to a shootout because Flodell made some very key saves, but Ellis made uh, many, many saves that the Royals honestly could have been ahead a little bit sooner. And then with our Royals, <clears throat> their goals scored to goals against is way more separated. Again, the Royals were even at 163 apiece on both ends. Our Royals are 174 to 139 against. So obviously the Royals are a lot better in terms of controlling the opponent compared to the uh, Wooster Railers, even though in that game on Wednesday, they did a good job at that. But again, I would have to give that more credit to Colton Ellis than the Railers really limited high octane chances. So I think if our Reading Royals are able to play, that was a great back and forth pace. Something I would like to see that Kurt McDonald even addressed a little bit in the post game is playing a little bit <clears throat> tighter with the puck. Like, the, the, the Royals were a little bit looser than, with the puck than I think they usually are in that first period on Wednesday. And that's something I noticed. That's why I think they were able to get the Railers very good chances on Fladell that he had to make big stops on in the first and even in the beginning of the second. And then it kind of started tightening up, but it did have that great back and forth playoff atmosphere that you could have of a lot of games. But I would like to see maybe a little bit tighter defensively so it's not this ridiculous. It's fun to watch a ridiculous great goaltending battle on both ends, but you don't want that every night for your team. You would like your team to play more sound defensively. So your goaltender doesn't have to stand on his head and it's whoever gets first to three because both goaltenders are playing absolutely immaculate. So that's kind of just where my point is on that. But when it comes to our overall play, Gooch has been on fire, of course. Bykov's been on fire. Uh, Pritchard's a little banged up, so we'll have to see if he's able to go. McNally is going to get a rest day, so he won't be in tonight because the, the Royals have so many good defensemen uh, Depth-wise, you might as well cycle a different amount of them in. So, uh, last game, Sasir wasn't in. He got rest. He'll be in tonight. And he's played very good this entire season, of course. Uh, he has 14 points. He's played good on both ends. Is a very good little defenseman, pretty much a little bit taller than me. So, uh, he's played great all season. This team has very great depth of defense. As Kerry McDonald said, it gives you the ability to rest these guys, and that's all they're doing to have everybody have the most fresh legs, and you always have a guy in there that has fresh legs, and that's honestly a really smart thing to do. I think that's something more teams probably should do that have depth, um, but that's really, to me, that's just a A-plus brilliant thing to do, so you have always somebody in the game that's really as fresh as a, as fresh as a fiddle and is just <clears throat> really, 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 really ready to go and be up on their skates and hasn't played a million games in the last two weeks, so... Um, I would say for our Royals, though, the players to look out for, for me, is I've loved Dominic Cormier the entire season, but he's been even more amazing of late jumping up on the play. I would have to say him, Mason Millman's been amazing since 
uh, coming down, and we still have to get him to the playoff game. So he's a guy I don't see resting much be, or at all until you get him to the amount of games that the B had to qualify for the playoffs. Um, in net, Hawkey or Flodell, I'm confident in. And then if Sandstrom comes back, maybe eventually we get Usti back. But we'll have to see how that goes forward as he's been solid with the uh, – I almost called him the Adirondack Phantoms. That's that's an old name. Uh, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, he's been solid with. Uh, Patrick Bykoff obviously has been amazing for the Royals. I would have to say he's the player to look out for. The forward court as well is, of course, Trevor mm-hmm. Gooch, who has just been racking up points left and right. There's obviously other guys like the Morrisons of the world and et cetera, et cetera. But those, I just try to pick three or four people that are kind of my stars of the night going in. And then I see, we'll see how... Close we are at the end. So Bykoff, Gooch on defense. We're going to go with Sasir and Cormier, and then in net it's whoever. I don't. I don't know who's going to uh, tend the twine tonight. If that's going to be Hawkey, and then Fladell will go again tomorrow. If it's going to be Flip, so we'll have to see what happens there. But our Reading Royals are set to take on the Wooster Railers after beating them in a shootout in Wooster tonight, and then they welcome in the Wheeling Nailers again tomorrow to Reading. So. Hopefully, our Royals can make it six in a row and then make it seven in a row tomorrow. This has been Sports Fanatic News, the latest mm-hmm. edition of the Royal Take. As we preview the Reading Royals against the Rooster Rails, please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget to keep the channel growing to 215 by mid-March. Peace out. Peace out, everybody.